Hello viewers, welcome back to Electrology. In today's video, we're diving into the fascinating world of static excitation systems. We'll explore why we need an excitation system, how it works, the function of its various components, and finally, we'll touch on the limitations of this system. So, make sure to stick around until the end. As you know, to produce power from an alternator, we need a rotating magnetic field. To achieve this, we require a turbine to rotate the rotor of the alternator and a DC supply to create the magnetic field. And to provide the DC supply to the rotor, we need an excitation system. But here's the question. Why do we need a complex excitation system? Why can't we just use a battery to supply DC to the rotor field? The answer is that the load on the generator isn't constant, it's always changing. And with it, the output voltage varies as well. The excitation system is crucial because it maintains a constant generator output voltage by controlling the active and reactive power of the generator. To do this effectively, we need to regulate the excitation voltage before it reaches the generator. Let's now dive into how the excitation system actually works. To generate power, we need to provide a DC supply to the rotor. This power is drawn from the generator's output, but since the output voltage is extremely high, like 15.75 kV for a 200 megawatt generator, we can't use it directly. This is where the excitation transformer comes in. The excitation transformer steps down the generator's output voltage to a safer level suitable for the automatic voltage regulator or AVR. For instance, the input voltage to the AVR is a constant 575 volt AC, but the output is a variable DC. The AVR, which is the heart of the excitation system, contains four thyristor banks. By controlling the firing angle of these thyristors, we can adjust the output voltage of the AVR. What's interesting is that these thyristor banks work on an N-1 principle. So even if one bank fails, the system continues to operate at full capacity using the remaining three banks. However, if more than one bank fails, the generator load must be reduced. There are other important components associated with the AVR, such as the voltage sensing unit, comparator, control circuit, and amplifier. The voltage sensing unit detects the generator's output voltage and sends this information to the comparator. The comparator then compares this voltage with a reference value. If there's any difference, an error signal is generated and sent to the control circuit. The control circuit processes this signal and sends a control signal to the power amplifier, which then drives the thyristor banks to adjust the output DC voltage. Finally, this regulated DC supply is fed to the generator rotor via a slip ring and brush assembly. The AVR can operate in two modes, auto and manual. In auto mode, the AVR adjusts the output DC voltage to maintain a constant generator output voltage like 15.75 kV. In manual mode, the operator has to constantly monitor the voltage, making it less efficient. At startup, when there's no output voltage from the generator, the AVR uses a separate AC or DC supply to initiate field flashing, helping to build up the voltage in the generator stator winding. Another key component is the field discharge resistor or FDR, which protects the rotor from overvoltage surges when the field breaker is opened. This ensures that the energy stored in the inductive rotor winding is safely dissipated. Now that we've covered how the system works and what are its different components, let's discuss its limitations. One major limitation is that the system relies on a slip ring and brush assembly to connect to the rotor. This setup can't handle high currents effectively and due to the friction between the carbon brush and the slip ring, the brushes wear out over time. This necessitates regular maintenance, which can be a hassle. And that brings us to the end of our deep dive into the static excitation system. We've covered why it's necessary, how it operates, the roles of its components and its limitations. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Electrology for more insightful content on electrical systems. Also, hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.